welcome to my channel. Welcome to today's video. Today's video is going to be my monthly installment of Shop My Stash. So that is a series that I do here on my channel where I go through all my products, pick them out, come back after a month, report to you on what I think of all of them, whether I'm gonna keep them, if they have a place in my collection. Sometimes I declutter some things. And then we turn around and pick out new products for the next month. So if that sounds good to you, if you like Shop My Stash videos, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't yet. I would love it if you stuck around. But with all that, there's a lot of products here, so let's get going. All right, so I do have most of these products on my face today, but everything that I'm wearing is listed down in the description box below. I like to go in order that I put these on my face just so I don't forget anything. And that starts us with primer. So the primer that I chose is the Catrice Prime and Fine Poreless Blur Primer Goodbye Pores. So I chose this one because it has very similar packaging to the Wet n Wild Impossible Primer, which I pulled in a month or two ago. And I really liked that primer. So I wanted to see how this compared. A lot of these products, sometimes they're new in my collection. They're just sitting there in boxes. And sometimes I just, I don't remember my thoughts. But I will say for this, it's a nice primer. I'm not gonna declutter it, but it's definitely not my favorite. I like the Wet n Wild more. It does have like a funky smell to it, not like an expired smell, but whatever the scent of this is, I just don't like it. I do typically gravitate towards a pore blurring primer. This one's just, you know, it's a very soft pore blurring primer. If you don't really suffer too much with enlarged pores, which I feel like I do like right here on the apples of my cheeks, this is not strong enough for that. And yeah, if I had to choose between an affordable option, I would choose the Wet n Wild over this one. And then let's go to concealer before foundation. So I have the Giorgio Armani Power Fabric Concealer in the shade three. I've pulled this in one or two times previously because I love this concealer. I believe that Mel Thompson used to hype up this concealer and for good reason. It's a really nice one. I thought for a little while that they were going to discontinue it, but it's still on the Sephora website as of now. So fingers crossed that they don't. I haven't tried any other concealers from Giorgio Armani, but I really don't need to. This just provides a really nice medium coverage. It's not a soft matte, so you do have to set it. However, it's not an overly radiant. It's just a really good high coverage, non-creasing concealer. I mean, it performs and does everything that you would want a concealer to do. So this is one that I will definitely prioritize in using up because I like it that much. And for foundation, I'm actually not gonna dwell on this too much because I brought in all of my NARS foundations. And I usually only pull in three foundations per shot my stash, but here I have five. I do believe that I have all of the NARS foundations because I plan on doing a ranking. I also do a series here on my channel where I rank all of my foundations within a brand. I've done Dior, Charlotte Tilbury, Chanel. I'll have those all linked down below. And next on my list is NARS. That's what you guys said you wanted to see. So I have the Natural Radiant Longwear. I have the Tinted Moisturizer. I have the newest one, the Light Reflecting, which actually made a bigger dent on this than I thought. It's like down to here, which is not a lot, but not bad. I have the Soft Matte, and then I have the Sheer Glow. The Sheer Glow is what I'm wearing today. And like I said, I'm gonna save my thoughts for that video, but like spoiler, I don't know how many of these I'm gonna keep. I've really been doing like a deep dive on the NARS and I'm just, it's not my favorite brand, I think, for foundations. They were hyped up for quite some time and I'm just, finding them overhyped just a little bit, but I'm gonna continue testing these. I don't feel like my thoughts are fully, fully there. However, I will be pulling in three new foundations for this round. And then that brings us to powder. So I brought in the Guerlain Meteorites. I have the shade Too Light. I'm making a dent on this. I am surprised 
that I can actually see that like this has kind of gone down. It's usually filled up a little bit more. I want to say that I ranked this my worst of powder for 2022. I didn't do a best or worst of for 2023, but I did for 2022. And this one I put in the worst of. And the only reason I did is because I find it like a little gimmicky and I find it again like the NARS foundation just overhyped. This is not a fun product to use. It's just a pretty product to use. The finish looks really nice. Like I like the effect that it gets on the skin. However, I just find it annoying to have to take off the cap and take off this little puff thing. And then I have to swirl my brush in and be very careful. The amount of times that these little balls have just flown out and landed on the floor is quite often. So it's just not my most practical product, but I will say it looks nice. Like I'm not going to declutter it because I like how it looks on the skin. And then that brings us to complexion products, blush, bronzer, highlight. I try to bring in one cream and one powder product. So let's start with the creams. For bronzer, I brought in my NARS Laguna bronzer, and this is my favorite cream bronzer. Again, brought this in a few times. I don't have that many cream bronzers in my collection, so I tend to just cycle through them and try and get good use on all of them. You can't really see that much progress in this. I wish you could see more, but you need very, very little of this. I did forget to put my cream products on today. I powdered without thinking and then realized I didn't put on my cream products, but sometimes that happens. And, you know, I have nothing bad to say. Definitely out of all my cream bronzers, recommend this one. I love it. I live on a farm and there's sometimes dogs barking, so... I apologize for that. Anyways, though, I have been using it with this brush, which I got during like Black Friday. This is the Sonia G Sheer Buffer Brush. She recommended it for cream bronzer. This is the absolute perfect cream bronzer brush. I love this. However, you end up using less product than you would normally if you were using a sponge, etc. So that's why this doesn't look that well loved, but I promise, I assure you that I use this all the time because it is my favorite one. And then for blush, I brought in my Rare Beauty blushes because I never tried these. So I got these in a holiday set, I don't know when, a couple years ago maybe, and they were kind of just sitting here. So I have the shades Hope, Peace, and Bliss. Love all of these. Definitely agree with the hype on these. However, I'm glad that I have the minis because it's nice to try just like some different colors. I think it's pretty obvious that I liked Bliss the most out of all of them. And then Peace was probably my least favorite. I just tend to like more cool tone rosy blushes than like vibrant peach. But, you know, these are going to last me forever, especially being minis. So, if she continues to maybe do some different shades next holiday, I would consider picking them up if they're minis, but I don't think that I would necessarily splurge on getting a full size because I just have too many blushes in my collection to justify that. However, I'm glad that I finally tried this and now I know what everyone's talking about when they talk about the Rare Beauty blushes. Now, that brings us to powder. So, we're speeding through this. This is not too bad. Sometimes this part of the video can be very long. I pulled in two face palettes for my blush bronzer highlight. So, for bronzer, I pulled in my Dior Backstage Contour Palette. I don't think they make this anymore, which I was surprised by. So, again, this was sitting in its box not being used, so I decided to pull it out, see what I think of it. Um, I don't love it. And the only reason that I don't love it or why I wouldn't recommend it is more just, I'm not a face palette person, I think. Like, I, when I use this, I just swirled all four colors together and then doesn't it just kind of become pointless to have this as like, a contour palette if you're not using each shade individually. Technically, I believe that they term these two as highlighters and then these two as bronzers. I am wearing this today 
But again, I just, I swirl all four in and that's how I use it. It's very nice, like the formula's nice. These two are definitely pressed harder. These two have some shimmer in it. So you get like a nice subtle sheen to your bronzer. Or if you wanted a more matte, I guess you could just go into these two or go into those two if you wanted a shimmer. But for me, it's just, again, not practical because I swirl them all as one. So I don't know if I necessarily needed this, but I have it now. I'll continue to use it like the after effect, just like the meteorites, but this was definitely just an impulse purchase that I didn't need to get. And then for blush and highlight, I pulled in my Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Pillow Talk Beautifying Face Palette and I have the shade Fair Medium. So this came out during holiday not this last holiday, but the holiday before. And it has two blushes, two highlights. This probably was my favorite holiday purchase of 2022. I really like this palette and I reach for it quite often. Even though I just said I'm not like a face palette person, these do have different shades. Now granted, I usually do just mix the two highlights and the two blushes but there's something about this. I love how it looks on the cheeks. So I'm still swirling it together and not using it as intended, but I love this palette. Like I said, one of my favorite purchases of 2022. I'm happy with it. And I think you can kind of start to see some wear in the highlights, definitely in the blushes, considering they're baked blushes. So I'm happy with the progress that I'm seeing on this palette and I'm happy with this purchase. Maybe I just need to challenge myself and try to use a face palette as intended, use just one color of the blush, the highlight, whatever, and not just swirl them all together and be lazy. But that finishes all the base products. We just have eyes and lips left and then we can turn around and pick out new products. I think we'll do eyes and then lips. I only pulled two palettes and let's talk about the least exciting one first. The first one that I have is the Pat McGrath Blitz Astro Quad in Ritualistic Rose. It looks like this and I didn't reach for this one time. Unfortunately, it just kind of slipped my mind. I haven't worn makeup as much this past month as I normally do. So when I was wearing makeup, I just wasn't reaching for this. So this is the only product I am going to roll over into next month because I think that this will be really nice for Valentine's Day. Like this is a very pinky Valentine's look with this one. So I am gonna keep this palette in. And then the one that I primarily used, the only one that I used, is the Natasha Denona Star Palette. So I'm wearing this one today and I really, really like this palette. I know that this is kind of a polarizing palette. Some people don't think that this is her best formula. I do think that it's like a little bit bulky just in comparison to some of Natasha Denona's newer palettes. She really has seemed to find her style and what she wants to do with her components now that she's released quite a few palettes. This was one of the palettes she had in the beginning, but I love this color story. I love that you have kind of more of like this brown side and then more of this cranberry side. I love this shade so much. This is like my very favorite color. So I'm wearing this, I'm wearing this cranberry shade. I'm wearing this shimmer on the outer corner and then this one on the inner corner. Granted, some of these shimmers are just like your typical mainstream shimmers. There's still some of them that just have like a very toppery, translucent base effect. This one is Galaxia, which is one of her more popular shimmer shades. This is the one that's in the Starlet palette, as well as I think the mini Retro. And then she put it in the Starlet and everyone was a little disappointed that she put in some repeat shades. But originally, flip this over. Originally, it was in the Star palette. And I'm just really happy that I picked this up. This was not one of my first Natasha Denona palettes. In fact, I want to say that I picked it up only two or th 
two years ago, two and a half years ago, because it was just on my list forever, but it was so expensive. And when they discontinued the Lila and the gold, I had those two on my wish list and I grabbed them before they discontinued it. And then I think I just grabbed this one too, because I was like, I've had this on my wish list for years now, like just get it. It wasn't one that was being taken off my wish list. So very happy that I got to play with this palette a little bit and just learn about it a little bit more. I don't, I don't know if this is discontinued or not. I will have to find out if it is, I won't link it below. And if it, if it's not, it will be linked below, but that leaves us with lips. And I usually only pull four and these are the four that I have. Three are minis. The first one that I have that's not a mini is this Milani Gloss in Luminoso. This is the Keep It Full Nourishing Lip Plumper. This is not too lip plumping. It's a nice lip gloss and nothing bad to say about it. If I had to put it on a scale of like plumping, I would say it's similar to the Lawless Forget the Filler. It really does not give that much of a tingle. So if you're afraid of that, you can get this. This is fine. I don't notice anything too much. And then the rest of these, these three are very similar in tone. I didn't realize that when I grabbed them. I thought that this was a lip gloss. I got this for free from Pure in like an Ulta order or something, but it's actually a liquid lip. It doesn't have like a name on it or anything. And it's a nice color. I mean, it's definitely the color I gravitate towards, which is why I'm not going to declutter it. But it ended up being very, very similar to the Ofra in Mocha. And I did that on purpose because I thought that it was a gloss. But since it was a liquid lipstick, it kind of just made it a little bit redundant. So this is the Pure and this is Ofra Mocha. I definitely lean a little bit more towards this one because it's more brownie versus the purple here. And then the last one I also got, I don't know, some kind of sample, but this is the Giorgio Armani lipstick. And this is the shade 102. This is the one that I'm wearing today with a lip liner. And here's that Giorgio Armani. So a little bit lighter. I really, you know, it was really easy to use all three of these. I could just kind of lay down a liquid lipstick and then apply this in the center and just kind of lighten it up. And if I wanted it a little bit more glossy, I just threw this on top. I just didn't use this today because it was a little bit more warm tone than my sweater and my eye look. So that's why I'm not wearing it. But that is all the products that I've been using for the last month here. I think I did a decent job at making sure like I was spreading the love around, really trying these products, even though I didn't wear makeup as much as I normally do on a day-to-day -day basis. I usually wear makeup at least five out of seven days. And this time it was maybe more like three out of seven. But I still, I still made sure to stick to my things and not wander off too much and just test these out. So I'm very happy with all these other than the Pat McGrath that we're gonna roll over. I'm not gonna declutter anything. The NARS foundations, that's just like, we're putting a pin in it. It's to be determined based on my video once I rank those. But now that we've talked about all these, let me just turn you around and we're gonna pick out new products for the next month. Starting off with primer as always, I usually pick more of a pore blurring primer to just rotate through because I have my illuminating primer in Project Pan. So I was kind of debating if I want to pull in this e.l.f. Power Grip Primer because I've never tried it or if I want to pull in this Tula one because I have a full size unopened back there, if you can see it. And this is the Brighten Up Smoothing Primer Gel. So I'm kind of thinking I'm going to pull this Tula one in because if I don't like it, then I can declutter this big one and have a lot more space in my primer drawer here. So I think that's going to be my primer. Now for concealer, I redid this drawer. If you remember it last time, I had all my unopened in the front or I had my open ones in this little box here, but I put all the unopened ones in there. 
And I think I want to stick still with one that I've already tried. And I kind of want to pull in the Gucci. I just did a video of the new Guerlain concealer. I'll link that video. And it reminded me a lot of this Gucci concealer. And since they're both like a luxury product, I kind of just want to try this again and get my thoughts on it. See if my duping idea was correct. So this is the one that I'm going to pull for concealer. Now for foundation, I actually know which ones I want to pull, which doesn't always happen, but I want to try and make sure that I'm pulling my lighter foundations while it's winter time and getting my use out of those. So this Prada one, which I reviewed not that long ago, is definitely just like a smidge light for me, for sure too light for me in the summertime. So I'm gonna use this a little bit more while I can. And then I also want to use the Chanel Vita Lumiere Aqua. I have the shade B20 and normally I wear B30 in Chanel. I don't know why I picked up B20. So I'm going to try this. This gives me like a lighter coverage and then more of a medium coverage. And then I have one more that I know is just too light for me. So let's grab that one. Okay, the last one I want to grab, oh no, there's two. I was going to say the last one I want to grab is this cushion. This is the Laneige, which one is this? Because they have a lot of cushions. This is the BB Cushion Hydra Radiance. And I know this one's light for me. And I know this is one of my older ones. So I need to use this. I guess we're pulling four this round. Because this one, the Deer Claire's, is that how you say this? The Illuminating Supple Blemish Cream SPF 40. This is a really great foundation. I tried this in my Yes Style haul, but it only comes in one shade and that is light. So I'm going to pull this one too because I want to have, I just want to use the ones that I know that are too light for me and I don't know when I'll be able to use it. Hopefully it starts to warm up here soon and I'm not so pale after this next month here. So four, four foundations this month. We're now at powders and I usually only pull one powder, but again, I think that I'm gonna pull two, mix it up a little bit because I want to pull in this Dior powder, no powder. I. I've seen some people say that they've had this for a while and it's gotten darker. I have the shade 2N, so I'm just gonna see if it's like gotten a little bit darker, plus I just need to use this up. Since I have lighter foundations, I thought this might be the time to use this since it does have color and just, just see, because I was always a little iffy on this. And then I also wanna bring in this CoverGirl Simply Ageless in Translucent. So this is not opened, I don't think, no, yeah. This is still sealed, so I can use this under the eyes. And if I don't need to darken up my foundation, I also have a translucent option. So these will be my two powders. On to bronzer. So I need a cream and a powder. And I am sick of telling myself every single month that I'm gonna pull in my Tom Ford bronzer and then I end up pulling something else. So I have the shade Terra and it is barely, barely used. I just have the mini, but still, I mean, this is like $70 for the mini. So I want to get some use out of this. And then for the liquid, like I said, when I talked about my products, I just, I don't have too many despite how full this drawer is. So we're just gonna rotate to the next one. And I think that it's time that I pull in this Illamasqua Contour Water Stick. What is this called? It is called Gel Sculpt. And this is just like the perfect little contour stick. It's great um, in lighter months because it is just a very light wash of color, even though it looks very dark. It is like a gel. It just gives like the perfect amount of contour. That's like very subtle. That's not blended out, but 
I'm gonna pull these two in. I still have my project pan if I need another kind of cream bronzer. So I think this will do. Moving along to the worst blush drawer. Um, okay, so cream and powder. I think just like the Tom Ford, I've been telling myself I'm gonna pull in these MAC Glow Play blushes, and then I never do. I have two of them. I have So Natural and Blush Please. So I'm gonna pull both of those, and these are still gonna be like my powder option. And for my cream option, I have two of these Fenty ones. That I haven't tried. So I have, what shade is this? Rose Latte and then I have Fenty Glow. This came in like a set so that's why it's not in the box there. So I'm going to pull both of these in. Don't normally pull four but it looks like this is just a special round. So four blushes and hopefully we can get some of these like unopened ones uh, worked on and, and tried and on my face instead of just sitting here in boxes. Here's highlight. I actually don't have that many unopened highlight. Let me just open this a little bit more surprisingly. So I think just sticking with the not the out of the norm for this month, I'm going to pull these ones in which are unopened. I got this so long ago and get it in a holiday set from Becca. And it has like four of their highlights in minis. I love that. This is my favorite thing about holiday is that I can get like four little mini highlights. So it has four different shades. It has opal, vanilla quartz, rose quartz, and prismatic amethyst. So we're going to test this out, see what I think. Maybe I won't like every single color so I can kind of declutter them, but they are minis, so... I also kind of like having minis in my collection, but this will cover highlight. I'm not going to grab a liquid because I only have like one or two and I'm not really like a big liquid highlight person. So I'm not going to grab it if I know I'm not going to reach for it. Let's pull lips before we do eyeshadow and wrap this up. So I need four and I want to try and make sure they're all a little bit different as far as formula wise. Um, I think I'm gonna pull one of these. This is the Viseart, um, some kind of moisture boost lip shine in Fleur. This will be nice for Valentine's Day. Um, that's a gloss, so I need a regular lipstick, don't I? That's good for Valentine's Day. What is this? Lancome, I think. Okay, this is just like a nice nude. So I'll pull this in as my lipstick. Maybe want like a liquid lipstick. What is this? This is from Buxom, but is this a liquid? Nope. Uh, where's that one that I wanted? This one. This is from L'Oreal. This is the Infallible... Pro Matte Liquid Lipstick in 822. Try this out, see what I think. It's my type of shade, so I'm not too worried about it. And then the last one I think I wanna pull is something just kind of easy. Yeah, let's just pull this, this Fenty cream in the shade. I think this is in Fenty Glow, but it's the cream version, so it doesn't look like the original. That gives me like two kind of creams, a liquid, and then a regular blow lipstick. Now for eyeshadow, I instantly, instantly knew I wanted to pull the Natasha Denona Love Palette because as you can see, it's still in the box. It's one of the only Natasha Denona palettes I have yet to try because I had sent it to Arizona and then my mom brought it back for me when she came to visit. So it's Valentine's. It is the perfect time to be bringing this out. 
And then I already have the Pat McGrath Blitz Astral Quad. So I maybe just want like one more palette, but I think I want like kind of a neutral palette. So I have the pinks, the neutrals, and then some special shades. Maybe I should pull in the soft glam. Yeah, let's pull in the soft glam. I think that'll be still like Valentine's y, but we have like a lot more neutrals in here. So if I want just a neutral, I can reach into this. So that'll be my three palettes. Let me now turn you around and we'll do a quick recap of everything that I pulled. All right, so here's everything that I'm gonna be trying, testing, using for the next month or so. It's a little bit more than I'm used to. I try not to overwhelm myself so I can really try out products and not just pull in 17 eyeshadow palettes and use two. That defeats the purpose. But, you know, I do have a little bit more foundation, a little bit more blush than I'm used to. I still think it'll be okay and I'll get some good use out of this and maybe especially like this primer. I want to just see if I like or not and get rid of the full size if I don't. So excited about these products, but this is where I'm going to leave you all. I hope you're having a great one and I will see you in my next video. Bye everyone.